Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. I'm Nick and this is MSFS Flight Plans. If this is your first time here, welcome. As you will soon discover, this is not a place for sim news, not a place for tutorials or plane reviews, all of which are immensely valuable in their own right. But all we do around here is try to find the coolest, best looking, most interesting places in the world of flyover. And then I tell you everything I can learn about these spots after subjecting myself to a 24 hour crash course before each and every trip. So today we're in another departmental region of France, and this one is much closer to the motherland than Reunion was, which is the last one we flew over, which is off the coast of Africa. And this is the Mediterranean island of Corsica, which is tucked into the armpit of Europe just 80 miles south of France and about 50 miles to the west of northern Italy. We're departing from Porretta Airport, Lima Foxtrot Kilo Bravo, on the eastern side of the island just south of the city of Bastia. And I only thought it fitting that we would take a French plane, so I chose the Fauga Magister, a vintage military trainer from the 1950s, the true dawn of the age of jets. And it's going to take a few minutes to get her started up, so Chet, you got to get out. I already took your picture. Get out. You get in the back if you want, but you're not sitting up there. You can be the trainer for this flight. Okay, just a few quick things. It's really easy to start up, but it does take a minute for it to get it run up, so let's go ahead and close the cockpit because it gets really loud. The sounds on this plane are just fantastic. All right, that looks pretty good. We're not going to use oxygen, so we can turn that off. We're not going to be flying high enough. All right, so battery on. And I think you're probably supposed to start the left engine first, but you got to throw these fuel levers forward, and it's hard to click on the left one because it's behind the right one. So I'm going to start the right engine first. So we got to wait for it to get to around 1,000 RPMs. Then we'll hit the igniter, throw the fuel on, and that one will be good to go. Actually, then we got to shut the igniter off at 4,000 RPMs. The weather out here, all of the flights I've taken over the past couple of days has been really rainy. It looked cool and was fun to fly through, but not good for sightseeing. So I put the high clouds on and lifted them to about 6,000 feet so they won't cause any distractions. But you can see it's kind of hazy out there. All right, that looks good. So let me see if I can hit that tiny little button. Ugh. And I'm going to make sure I close both of those canopies. Yep, we're good. Uh, as far as graphics go, there are a couple of add-ons I've got installed. There's tons of add-ons available for this island for free. And there's a couple of paywares for the airports. No payware for the scenery. But I was having some hard freezing issues with different combinations of them I was trying. And I didn't think they improved the scenery all that much. So I pulled all of them out except the airport that we're coming into. And one more that I'll tell you about a little bit later. Those, of course, will be linked in the video description. All right, so now i got to turn the igniter off. And then we'll start up the other engine. And we'll go ahead and get the alternator on and get our instruments working. When we get out there, for some reason, the mountains out here just look really cool. This is a neat landscape to fly over, but there's going to be a lot of popping. But there were enough mountains, and it is an island, and there's a lot of history, so I figured it was worth the flight out here. And if you want to take this exact flight, as always, I'll also link this route in the video description, which will take you to a little nav map. And you can take it from little nav map and throw it from there into the sim. Let me get this one started. And if you don't know how to do that, I've included a tutorial for that as well. There is an autopilot you can use in this one, but it's very basic and you have to use the FB to do it. And so it's like an altitude hold, vertical speed hold, heading hold. So we're just going to hand fly this because it'll be kind of fun in a jet. Be dipping up and down and around the mountains up here. And we just need to get that to 4000. We'll be ready to go. Everything else is good. And if you do turn the oxygen on, it'll do the little deal where it you know, goes up and down while it's breathing. Really cool. And at nighttime, if you're flying at night, originally I wanted to take a sunset tour, which looked awesome with the sun setting out over the Mediterranean. But it was casting too many shadows for us to see some of the sights down there. Okay, so that's good to go. But that looked really cool. But when you turn the lights off, the uh, panel lighting is a uh, black light that shines on air. And then all these things glow. What's that called? Oh, ultraviolet. That's what it is. And it looks really cool. They got some red lights down here, and then this is all black light up here. It looks really neat. So maybe when we land, I'll show you that. Okay, I think we're in pretty good shape here, so let's go ahead and get on moving down to our runway. We're pretty close to it. Parking brake off. And away we go. The sound pack for this thing is great. Really great. And I do have my stick for a flight controller now, which is great, that I'm using from my verbal pack that I got from the helicopters. And I'm still struggling a little bit because my throttles are on the right. I wish they were on the left because I'm trying to. I am not even remotely competent with my left hand. Taking off's not too bad. Landing, still working on that. Trying to get some coordination. And if any of you guys know what those two little balls are right on the front of the glare shield there, I've just been using them to line up our approach, and maybe that's what they're for. 
but let me know because I haven't really seen anything like that in any other plane so I don't know what that does or what they're supposed to do but speaking of the tutorials for a little nav map I got the second comment now about my rate of speech which admittedly is very high the first person was a total jerk about it he got blocked this one was much much more polite but just a note on that the reason why I talk so fast and I know I do because people tell me that all the time I don't know if this is certainly the reason why, but I grew up in Texas from two weeks old to eight years old in Dallas, Texas in the late 70s and early 80s when people still had accents in different parts of the country. And when I moved to Connecticut at eight years old, I had a really long southern drawl. And the people in Connecticut, all the kids were making fun of me for the way that I talked because I didn't know many strangers from the south up there in those days. And it must have fractured my tender psyche because in the region of Connecticut I lived in, which I made a flight about actually, on the eastern side of Connecticut, they don't really have an accent, which is strange because you got Rhode Island accents, you got Massachusetts, of course, New York. Around there they just talk fast. So I lived there until I was in eighth grade. And by the time I left, I was a fast talker. I moved down to central Florida where everyone was just blown away that anybody could talk that fast. Lived in Florida till 99, moved to Buffalo where everyone said I talk too slow again. So I'm straddling the line between talking too fast and slow. And on these flights, when I'm trying to think a few steps ahead of everything that we're doing, not just flying the plane, but all the stuff I got to remember for what we're looking at, my mouth is often just trying to play catch up with my brain. But you know what's funny about that? People that comment on it, I'm guessing may not be actual pilots because any of you that are know that speaking to ATC on the radio requires you to talk extremely fast. Half the time I came in and understand what those guys are saying and girls. I don't know how they understand each other. But you gotta learn how to talk fast. Okay, landing lights on, one notch of flaps. If you guys are ready, I'm ready. Let's do this. They say the rotate speed on this thing is 90 knots, which seems way early because this thing won't get up off the ground until about 150 knots. But it's said to just kind of start pulling gently back on the stick once you get around 90 and let it take itself off. So that's what we'll do. And then we're going to have to trim nose up quite a bit. I couldn't find where the trim indicator was, so I didn't know how to set it for a takeoff setting. Which might be one of the reasons why I'm having so much trouble getting off the ground. But I don't know where the indicator for that is. We got a little bit of a crosswind coming across from our left, so that's why I was kind of pushing us that way a bit. All right, gears up, and flaps up, and landing lights off. All right, so let me start trimming up here. And the never exceed, exceed speed for this plane is, you can see some popping right down there, which is strange, because I've never seen anything quite like that in the sim before, is over 400 knots. So this thing can haul butt, but I think the maneuvering speed is around 250, 280 knots. So let me just get stabilized here with the trim and then we'll be on our way and I'll start telling you about all this amazing stuff out here. All right, that looks pretty close. Good enough for now. All right, we are gonna VFR fly this even though I do have the route drawn out. So I'm gonna occasionally glance over to a little nav map on the left, but I kind of remember where we're going because this is probably the 10th flight I've taken out here trying to get our sights lined up just right. So this town up here to the left is called Bastia. And despite being owned by France now, you'll notice most of these towns out here have a very Italian sounding names. And they do have a local dialect out here. And I don't know if it's more Italian or Genoese or French. Because those guys have all played a big part in the history of this place. And Bastia has a big citadel out here that's from, built in the 1300s by the Genoese. And it's going to be right out here on this little island. We'll take a look at it when we fly by. And this is the second largest city on the island after the place we're flying into. Which I'll tell you about when we get close to that. There it is. There's the Citadel. And pretty much every town has its own big fortification like that. I think all of them were built by the Genoese. That pier looks a little bit flat, doesn't it? You can tell there's probably a cruise ship there, which is buried in the water. So again, I want to set realistic expectations for the scenery out here. The mountains are going to look good texture-wise, but we will see some popping. There's going to be some cliffs by the water, so we'll see a little bit of drooping. But overall, it's just a cool landscape to fly over. And there's plenty to talk about, so we're taking it. We're taking it. 
So we're going to come around the side of this mountain here, and then we're going to cut over to the western side of the island. And just south of us, once we head towards the west, we'll see Mont Stello, which is called Mont, so maybe the French named some of the mountains out here. And that rises to around 4,000 feet, and it's the second tallest point on the northern end of the island. I think the tallest is a little bit further north. I do need to trim up some more. If I have just completely overlooked the trim indicator on here, if there is one, if you guys have this plane, please let me know where that is, because that would make my life a lot easier. Alright, there's going to be a little pass between these mountains up here, and that's what I'm going to aim for it. Over the top of them, uh, we're, not, we're too far away to see it, but they've got some power lines that run right along the spine of those mountains there that look really cool. I checked those out when we are flying over here before. Look at that little radio antenna down there. Very nice. Very nice. Some of the coastlines look great, where you can actually see some depth in the water. Others just look okay. Some not great at all, but you can see the fields look really good. The little villages look really good. That stuff they did a good job with. But you know, this is close enough to the Alps, and you guys have heard me complain over and over again about the popping in the Alps. Everything out in this region is just really bad with that. Andy's not at all. Rocky's not really bad at all. But out here, Pop City. All right, once we come over this, they're going to see a little town car called Farinoli. I think that's how you say it. It ends with an E, not an I. I don't know how Italians say words that end with an E, but it looks like Farinoli. And what we'll see is a little coastal portion of the town, but then kind of going up on the side of the mountain, there's a slightly larger town area. And I say that very cautiously. The population of that place is 300. So we'll take a little peek at that as we come over. Look at that switch back down there going up in the mountains. I think hiking is a pretty big deal out here. Look at those little trails right down our triangle window down here. Now that looks really good, doesn't it? Let's see if we get any popping here. Not really. Not too bad. I got my graphic settings. Oh, there's some. Graphic settings are turned up way high. This plane can handle it, and the island can handle it. Train level of detail is almost 300. Everything else maxed out. And I've got all the ship traffic turned on, too. So we'll probably see a lot of little boats puttering around in here. All right, just cutting the throttle a little bit, because we're going to start coming down pretty rapidly. Have some fun flying this thing. Oh, it's actually getting worse. That's rare. All right, we're just not. We're going to stay mostly looking out the front window until we get past this stuff here. All right, so there's Farinoli up there. You can see their little beach down there on the water. And about a mile south of the town part that's up on the mountains, there are the ruins of an old convent out there called the Convent of Marianda, which was completed in 1750 by some Franciscan monks. And I don't know if you could see it in the sim or not. I'll show it to you on the satellite map at the end. But you really you have to walk through the woods to get there. And if you come out here in real life. They say don't go anywhere near it. A part of it blew down in a windstorm in 2013. It's just walls now, what's left of them. But they say the rest of it could come down at any minute. So hikers beware. All right, now we give it a little more throttle since we're stabilizing again. All right, so Farnoli kind of, their beach area is down in here, kind of stretches up here a little bit. And then the convent is probably, the ruins are probably somewhere out here. Again, you can't see elevation on the satellite map, so that looks to be about probably where it is in this region here. This next town up here is called San Florent. And that was established in the 1500s by the Genoese as they attempted to maintain control of the locals out here and they have a rowdy bunch in these parts. I'll tell you more about that later. But they built another big citadel just north of the current harbor which we'll take a look at. And you can see the foundation of this one but there's a little round like castle with three turrets on the side of it that you can also just kind of barely make out. It's not modeled perfectly but we'll see it. It's going to be right up in this area right here. And you will be able to see the pointy outer walls of it too. What a cool landscape, huh? Really neat. There was a tree fix for this area. I didn't think the trees looked bad before, but I figured I'd throw it in because it was kind of a small file, but I think that was creating some hard freezes. I had a really bad one right about this spot, and another one about two-thirds of the way through the flight. Those seem to have been remedied. All right, let's see here. All right, so there's the little castle right there, and then there's the, the retaining walls around the outside of it. At 1,500. That's pretty old. 
All right, we've got just a little detour here to check out a dam that I spotted on the satellite map. And of course, when I see a dam, there's no way in heck we're going to miss that. So we'll cruise out there to check that out, and I'll tell you how this island got here. Not the people, but the island itself. You'll be delighted to know that finally we have found one that was not created by volcanoes. I can't even remember the last time we flew over an island that was not volcanic. But this one was created about 250 million years ago by a granite uplift. And this is the most mountainous of all of the Mediterranean islands, and the fourth largest. And the tallest peak is called Mount Cito, and that's it right over there. See it? That rises up to about 9,000 feet at its highest point. Yeah, I really wish we could have left the sunset on because it looks so cool. So if you're flying this and you just want to see some nice weather and some nice lights, the sunset is cool. But then again, you won't be able to see a lot of the stuff on the ground. And if you like pleasant weather, you'll probably love Corsica. The average daily temps get to the mid-80s in the summer out here. It barely gets below freezing during the wintertime. Alright, so there is the water that we're aiming towards because that's where the dam's going to be. So we'll just check out these little towns along the way as we head out there. And this is called the Cadoli Dam, which blocked up the Regino River to create the Cadoli Reservoir behind it, and the dam will be on this side of it. And they built that thing in 1984 to gather up drinking and irrigation water, not for electricity though. And this dam's not real high. I think it's 92 feet high, but it's 1,500 feet long, so we should be able to see it. I don't know how I missed it, honestly, the first time I flew by here, but I wasn't really looking for dams. I was looking at the stuff down along the coast. Waterways look pretty good. Really good, actually, but none of them are coming down the side of a mountain. That all looks fantastic. Really fantastic. The mountains only seem to fight with us when we're right over the top of them. That looks amazing. Really a nice scene. All right, I want to make sure I get a good angle to check this dam out. And this is an earthen dam. It's not concrete. And I don't know why most of the dams, except in China, where they look horrendous, look really good in the sim. That one we saw in Uzbekistan, that was a really cool flight. That thing looked incredible. Probably the best looking dam I've ever seen in the sim. All right, I may have trimmed up a little too much because it's wanting to nose up, so we'll just take care of that right now. All right, yeah, that dam looks, looks from here like it really looks in real life. We'll get closer and take a close-up peek at it. But for as long as this place has been around, and I'll tell you just precisely how long humans have been out here, it's fairly sparsely populated, except down along the coast there. But then again, I guess, you know, living up in the mountains, if you've got all this beautiful coastline without a lot of other people living out here. So there's the Regino River there running away from it. And there's a couple of little tributaries that kind of run into the other side of it. You can see one of them there on the southern end of it. So I'm guessing it flowed towards us because it backed up everything behind the dam over there. And that looks pretty good. For a dam that's only 100 feet, uh, feet high, that looks pretty good. Yeah, man, that's spot on. Very cool. All right, we're going to swing out over the water again here. Take one more peek at that. Gosh, I love dams. I don't know why I do. There's something that's always kind of like creeps me out about dams, but I can't help but look at them and get near them. Just the size and the power of what's going on in those things. This next town is called Algajola. And this one has a very long history. It was built on the site of an ancient Phoenician city called Arga. And they got a huge beach up here. Look at that thing right in front of us. Let's dip the nose down. Look at that. If you like beaches, this is a good island to come to, unlike Hawaii. But if you're not sure where the Phoenicians fit into the timeline of history, those guys were direct descendants of the Canaanites, and this is a long way from the land of Canaan. That's up by Lebanon, so I don't know how those guys got out here, but they controlled a lot of this region, northern Africa. And they've also got their own 16th century fort down there, at least what's left of it. And let's see where that is. This is going to be it right here. I think. Let's see. Yep, you can see the little points of it down there. 
And this next area here is called Santa Brogia, and it's almost all resorts, as you're going to see when we fly over it. Lots of pools and tennis courts, which all look like they were modeled really well. So I guess that's where you're going if you're a tourist. But this is a pretty good distance from the airport. You know what? They got an airport right up here. There's one right behind us there. Look at that. Resortville. There's all the tennis courts. Oh, no, there's the airport right there. That's it right there. And that is towered, and it's paved, and I think it's about 7,500 feet long, so if you feel like taking off or landing from there, you can. You don't need my permission to do that. All right, this is the town of Calvi. And then I'll tell you, as we're getting into our destination airport, this whole flight's going to be about 30 minutes, so we're probably halfway there. And they have the biggest citadel of them all, which is all piled up on this island right here, but they built so much stuff up on the top of it that all you can really see is the outer retaining walls, which are going to pop a little bit. And that was built in 1491, the year before Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And this place saw a lot of action, including the Siege of Calvi in 1794, during which Admiral Nelson lost his right eye. That's it right there. Looks like it's kind of melting, doesn't it? There's another pretty big one down in the place that we're landing at as well. But we're not going to be able to see it because we're coming in too far away for our approach. So we flew past the place where Nelson lost his right arm, which was out in the Canaries. And now we know where he lost his eye. Which, God, that's just insane. A year ago, I probably couldn't even tell you who Horatio Nelson was. Now I not only know that, but I know where he lived, where he fought, and where he lost his eye and arm now. How ridiculous is that? All of this while having the time of our lives, learning all that stuff. Awesome. Ooh, look at all those windmills over there. I wonder why they don't have any more on the island, just right there. All right, so we've got nothing but beautiful scenery to take in until we get to the capital and our destination. So here's a brief history of all the wild shenanigans that have gone on out here in this place. For one thing, it's been inhabited since at least the Mesolithic era, which goes back about 10,000 years if we go to the start of it, BC. But considering how old some of the cave art is up in France and Spain, which isn't too far from here, I would be willing to bet that people have been here a lot longer than that. But during the first millennium BC, the ancient Greeks from Carthage set up shop for a while before the Romans rolled in and made it a uh, province in 283 BC. There's another huge beach there. And according to some early Roman documents, those guys weren't real impressed with the locals out here. Apparently it was a bunch of sheep and bee farmers who liked to sell their own people into slavery. And they were famous for their cheap wine out here, interestingly enough. But these people were so ill-regarded that Rome would often exile political enemies out here, including Seneca, the Stoic philosopher. He was supposed to be executed, but was sentenced to a much worse fate of drinking box wine out here for six years. But after that, he came back to Rome to serve as a tutor for Nero, who also got sick of his aloof stoicism, along with suspecting that he might be plotting to kill him. And again, sentenced Seneca to death, which, like any good Stoic, he carried out on himself, and I had to read all about that. They made him, uh, if you're curious about gross things like that, when he was sentenced to self-suicide, self-execution, I guess, he drew up a warm bath for himself because the way they had to do it was cut long marks along their veins to drain themselves of all their blood, but he made a big bath for himself, hoping that it would keep his blood from coagulating. And apparently it was a rather long, slow, gruesome death. Which sounds long, slow, and gruesome. Those mountains look fantastic, don't they? And the popping. If you guys know of any route in the Alps, any route, I don't care where it is, that's pop-free, let me know. We'll fly it. I don't care if there's nothing to look at. I'll find something to talk about. I just want to fly somewhere out here in Europe that doesn't have popping in the mountains. Ooh, look at that road running along the side of that mountain over there. Boy, I bet that's a fun drive. Just a beautiful place. After the collapse of the Roman Empire, this island changed hands a few times until a blowout battle in 1284 when the Genoese finally moved in and discovered why Rome didn't like the locals. Spending the next 200 years trying to keep everyone chilled out. 
In the 1500s, Genoa found itself fighting not only the natives out here, but also France and Spain, who were battling for control of Italy. And if all that wasn't enough, pirates from North Africa, the infamous Barbary pirates, were a constant menace which is why they built towers all around these islands. And I actually meant to take a look at some of them, but they're one of the add-ons models all of the towers and all the lighthouses out here, so throw that in. It was a pretty small file, I think. But you can definitely see them. I'll try to remember to spot some as we come in. But they built those because they didn't want any of the pirates landing out in the boonies and then sneaking up on any of their towns. In 1729, the locals finally had enough of their babysitters and started the Corsican Revolution to oust the Genoese. And in 1755, they succeeded and enjoyed doing whatever the heck they wanted out here until France conquered the island just 14 years later in 1769. And in August of that same year, a guy named Napoleon Bonaparte was born here in the town of Ajaccio. Ajaccio? I do not know how to pronounce that. I saw two different ways of pronouncing it. I think it's Ajaccio, which is the capital where we're coming into and the largest city. But apparently, Napoleon wasn't real thrilled with the locals either because he paid zero attention to this place, even while he was Emperor of France. Really just a backwater out here. Which is too bad because it's so beautiful. And it's not really far, you know, ship-wise, to get from any of the local mainlands. I don't know why. I guess the locals were that bad. And I think one of the big issues out here was the orthodoxy of the vendetta system, where the punishment for violating anybody else's honor was always death. I guess they kind of had a Hatfield and McCoy thing going on out here for a while. And I read that during the 1800s, there was a 30-year span where there were 4,300 murders, almost all of them due to the infighting of the clans. So, yeah, these people were kind of hillbillies out here. Look at all those beaches, even when there's not really any population centers. You just drive down the mountains, and there you are at another big sandy beach. But I guess you can have those when it's not all volcanic, jagged rocks everywhere. There's a lot of them out here. Because the population out here was so poor and so willing to try to do anything to get out of here, a lot of them signed up for the military for World War I. And they lost a massive portion of the male population. More than double the percentage of France's population for the males. And it was so bad that people started starving out here because there's no one to work the farms. There's another beach. So it took a pretty big toll. I didn't get the precise numbers of people they lost, but it was quite a few. Boy, imagine just standing on that beach and looking down that little bay. And again, just farms around there. No real towns or anything. And that seems like it'd be a pretty good hike from, well, there's a little town up there. No, that's just a river. And that one doesn't look quite right, does it? All right, see, oh, there's a tower right there. See it? Let me get my pointer. Right there, there's one of them. Almost every point sticking out in the water has one of those towers on it. There were hundreds of them out here. And there's a big long building of some kind. This place was captured by the Nazis for a while during World War II, who were kicked out after the Italian armistice in 1943, making this place the first French department to be liberated during that war. And once the Germans moved out, the U.S. moved in, establishing 17 airfields out here. So many, in fact, they called this place the USS Corsica. <laughs> That's a kind of a funny way of saying we got a lot of airfields out here. And then in the 1970s, the locals got all fired up over a wine dispute. I'm not kidding about that. Their cheap wine kicking off something called the Corsican Conflict against the French. And when that chilled out, the citizens went back to fighting with each other. And in 2018, which is some fairly recent history, this place had the highest murder rate in all of France. Almost entirely due to their blood feuds. And as backwards and foreign as that may seem in this day and age to most people watching this, I'm kind of familiar with what that's like. If you saw our Deep South flight, that was over the town I lived in in Central Florida once we moved down from Connecticut, and that was back in the early 90s. It may not be as bad now. I mean, people weren't killing each other back then, but the vendetta system was kind of the law of the land out there. They were country folk for sure. So I kind of get it. All right, we're approaching the beautiful capital of Ajaccio, Napoleon's birthplace. And they've got a really nice looking citadel out here too. 
I'll show it on the satellite map. We won't really be able to see it because we're going to be coming in on our approach angles too far away, but the cityscape off to our left, which is where the big city is from the airport, is going to look beautiful nonetheless. And we're going to come around the tip of that point sticking out there because there's another tower and a lighthouse out there, and there's the foundation of a, uh, an old fort out there. It's pentagonal in shape. But for some reason, I think I remember that island not being modeled very well compared to the rest of this landscape, so I don't know if we'll be able to see it, but I'll show you that on the satellite map too. And this city got really built up during the Roman period because I guess they liked the navigational specs for this bay out here. They could bring their ships in. And they actually found a bunch of old Roman ships, archaeologists did, not too long ago, sunk out here. So the city kind of stretches around this way and up this side of this mountain. We'll get a real good look at it. We're going to come around here and then come in for our approach this way. I'll try to manipulate that with my left hand, which will be another challenge. Not as hard as the helicopters. I'm getting better at it. And speaking of helicopters, I was a little bit nervous about our most recent flight over New York City. How that would sit with everyone, since we usually fly planes on this channel. I didn't know how many purists would be out there, because we flew a helicopter for the first time on that one. There's another little tower right there. See that? And there's going to be a lighthouse out on this one. It looks pretty good. And this one out here should be where that fort is, so we'll kind of take a pass by there and see if we can see that foundation. But based on the feedback I've received about that flight, it was overwhelmingly positive. People seem to like it a lot, so I think that's what we'll do for the big cities from now on. When there's a lot of stuff jammed into a tight little area, we'll hop in the rotorcraft and check those out. And I got some, uh, well, I made one, one thing that's, of course, the best benefit of this channel, is I made some friends with some guys that are creators for heli-specific YouTube channels. And one of them turned me on to, he did a review of a bunch of helicopters, and I noticed he said a few of them were freeware, two of which I got from flightsim.to. One, I had to go to a Discord server to download that. And that was really cool. So I picked up three more free choppers that are all pretty neat. All right, there's that little white lighthouse, that white speck down there. And I'm going to see if we can see the foundation of that fort. Yeah, so for the cities, we'll do the helicopters. Everything else we'll do longer trips, we'll do the plane flying. All right, you can tell that the terrain for that does not look nearly as good as the rest of, as the, rest of the mountains out here, but I don't know why that got overlooked and there's the foundation of that fort right there see that pentagon well at least that's there but that's really blurry isn't it and when we land uh, I'll not only show you the terminal for this airport which is pretty cool at least from the outside but I'll try to remember to show you what this dash looks like at night with the lights turned on because that's pretty cool and then on little nav map I'll show you a couple other things about this town specifically Napoleon's birthplace I guess his family was pretty well-to-do. They had a big four-story mansion that's a museum down here now. And I don't know what they were doing out here. Maybe they were vendors for the box wine. But we'll check that out. One more thing I want to mention that I found out from one of the helicopter sim channels, and I'm sure it's popped out somewhere else, too, on some of the other sim channels. Parallel 42 just released a freeware application that you can download from the Parallel 42 site called Simstaller. And that thing will look at all of the add-ons in your community folder, and maybe anywhere else, and let you know if there are any conflicts with any of them. Because you know sometimes those things will jack up the scenery, jack up your avionics, jack up the fonts inside the plane sometimes. And the old school solution to that, which I'm sure like many of you have done several times, is dumping everything from your community folder and then slowly adding things back in to see what the problem is. Well this thing will just tell you right away where there might be a conflict. And it's free. So check that out. It's on their website. All right, we got to come way down. Gosh, I'm way high. All right, so let's just do that. There's a runway over there. Yeah, this is a good opportunity to use our spoilers. So I'll do that too. I think gear speed's around 150 knots. We got to lose some altitude. And this runway is really cool. You can see it goes right to the end of the water over there, and it looks awesome at nighttime. Well, this plane can handle a steep dive, so we may just have to do that. All right, we're already coming up on 4,000. We'll be okay. I'm just going to cut the throttle and coast for a little bit. All right, what do we got down there? Yeah, one of the add-on packs that I had to take out put a big cruise ship down there, which looked pretty cool, but again, we're so far away that you... I mean, you could tell it was a cruise ship. 
but it was just messing with some other stuff, which is unfortunate. So if you want to look at flightsim.to, there's probably five or six scenery add-ons out here, but you're going to be in for a real treat trying to figure out which ones are having the conflicts. Even with Simstaller, I couldn't quite figure it out because it seems to be more focused on planes than scenery, at least from what it looked like when I ran it for my computer. But it was having some real problems out here. So I would just load up the ones I'm going to include in the video description because as we saw, we did not have any stuttering or frame rate issues. The popping, you can't get around. It's going to be there regardless. But unless you're flying a really complex plane, you can go ahead and turn your settings way up because this place can handle it. All right, I'm going to use my two little balls there to line up for the runway because I'm just guessing that's what they're for. That's what I'm going to use them for. All right, we're at 2,000 now, so give it a little more throttle. But we got to get down to gear speed too. So this is the capital, sec uh, first most populated. The second largest city in the second most populated is Bastia, the one that we left from. And just to our left there, in the middle of our triangle window out here, they got a naval base with some helicopter pads that you can land at, but you can't select them. They do have a couple helicopter pads at this airport, probably included with the add-on, because I don't remember seeing them in the sim world map before I put that in. So if you're wanting to fly a chopper out here, you could do that. And I probably will. I'm going to put that add-on back in and go look at that fort, because it's pretty big and it looks pretty good. All right, Pappy, say we're high, and I'm too fast, so we'll slow down. I'm really going to live on the edge and put our gears out at the very last minute. If Chet was actually flying in the back, he would be letting me know that I don't have our gears out. All right, gears down. And one notch of flaps. And there's another tower out there. Look on our right little triangle window there. See that? I can't use my mouse because I got one hand on the throttles and another one on my stick. They are just all over the place out here. Now, I wonder why they would put one so close to a big city like this, because if they're looking out for pirates, I mean, you obviously put many, can't put many cannons in there. I don't know why they put that one so close. All right, our approach speed is supposed to be 110 knots, so we're doing good there. And we'll go full flaps. And we're getting that creeping uh, terrain deal. That's very strange. All right, we'll get her down. Hopefully I'll hit the first taxiway. This plane does like to glide a bit. And if we can do that, then we'll go check out the, uh, and even if we can't, we'll go check out that terminal. All right, brakes. Where's the next taxiway? We're probably going to have to go to the end. That's cool. We'll do it. Because you've got to check this thing out. Oh, look at that. They put some boat planes out there. Are those gooses? Looks like it, doesn't it? That might be the first time I've seen a goose as one of the static planes. All right, here's a taxiway. Cool. I don't have to go all the way to the end. All right, flaps up. And I see my nose gear light is red. I hope I didn't break it off when we landed there. Maybe the bulb's just gone out. Look at this. Just beautiful. Really nice. So, hate to disappoint you, but the tower is not modeled on the inside. Portions of the terminal are, so this is one that's better to look at from the outside, not the inside. But as you can see, it looks good. Way better than the default one did. And I'm going to pull up right in front so we can see in there and see all the little signs with the arrivals and departures on there. Then we'll take a look at the little nav map. So I think what I'll probably do for upcoming flights is just kind of stagger between the helis so I can keep getting my reps with those as we check out some cities. When I put our community poll up, London was a very close second, and that would be a great spot for a helicopter flight. And there's tons of add-ons for it, so we'll check that out. I'd like to do Seattle at some point. That would be really cool. We've still got our New Zealand flight to check out that huge volcano up there, so a lot of stuff in the hopper. And as always, if you know any spots we got to check out, let me know. I fly over every one of them that's recommended just to see what they look like. The big thing is not too long and preferably plenty of stuff to look at and talk about. But let me know anything. I'm always checking out any areas that are recommended. That is a really, really nice looking freeware add-on. Not as good as the Ocala Airport. That was one of the best I've ever seen. Our swamp tour flight. 
Look at that. You can see the signs inside the terminal there. See that? Those little blue signs? All right. Uh, these are all for jets, but we are a jet, I guess, right? We'll pull up right in the middle here, like we own the place. I'm guessing I probably can't park in that big red thing. All right. looks like I'm supposed to take an angle, so we'll try that. I am not obeying the traffic lines here. Oh, boy, that's a pretty... Well, now I'll just park at this one. That's probably where I'm supposed to go. All right, well, we're here. Nobody else is here. We can do whatever we want. Look at that. Look in there. Very cool. Very cool. You know, I don't know why they didn't put any more static planes over here if they got those other ones, but it is what it is. All right, parking brake on. And we'll get her shut down. And open up the canopy. Unlock it. Mmm. Nice Mediterranean air. Very nice. Okay, so here comes a little nav map. Alright, so here's Corsica. There's France up there. Here's Italy over here. The boot. There's Sicily down there. And let's take a look at this place. See what all we got. So there's where we left from. And just a little north of that was Bastia. And they got a big stadium down here. Of course, we were, I was trying to get the plane trimmed out so we couldn't see that. That looks pretty good in the sim. Looks really good, actually. And with one of the add-ons, this little thing here, which is St. Nicholas Square, was modeled pretty well, and it may have even put a cruise ship in here, but again, community folder, beware. There are going to be some conflicts. And there's their big citadel. This whole thing is the citadel, but you can just see kind of some of the points here, but they've just built stuff up on top of it now. Is that another stadium? Nope. Plenty of soccer fields out here, though. And here's one of the towers, one of the many towers. I just marked a few of them, but just look at anything sticking out on the water. For almost all of them, you can spot one of those little Genoese towers out there. So we circled around over here. That was the first mountain that we saw. That one goes up to 4,000 feet. Again, I think the highest one out here is north of the island. And you can see some of my test flights that I did not delete my trail for. And here's the town of Farinole. That's how you say it. Very small. Population 300. And here's where that convent ruins are. Look at that. So you might be able to drive your car up that dirt road. This one's the paved one here. But you got to walk through the woods a little ways to get that, which would be pretty neat, I think. All right, here's St. Florent. Let's look at their citadel. So there's that round thing there, and you can see the three little turrets on there, and you can see the outer retaining wall. I think the mayor of the town lives somewhere down there now. I don't think he lives in the castle, but wouldn't that be cool? All right, now we come over to our dam. Look at that. It, boy, it looks a lot taller than 100 feet from there, doesn't it? But we are looking right down the top of it. It looked just like that. That was great. And it would seem like that would be where they would stick a hydro facility, but they did not. They said, I don't see any power lines either, so it's not a hydro facility. That must just be where they control the outflow. But, I mean, I don't even see, if it does have any outflow, where would it go? There's no river or anything. It washed through those buildings there. Hmm. Although the sim, if you recall, did draw the river in there, but that doesn't seem to be accurate. I mean, they might have a little runoff because it's really green down there, but they put a river in there for us. All right, well, whatever. All right, here's another fort right here. That one was tough to see, but you could see the retaining wall in that one. And then we get to St. This is the uh, the tourist area. This is all the resorts here. Ambrosio. Nothing but tennis courts and swimming pools. Another tower. And then we came on down here to the cool stuff. This is where Admiral Nelson lost his eye fighting over this place. And yeah, I mean, from another angle, look at that little thing sticking out there. That's cool. That did not look good in the sim. I don't think I'm going to go ahead and officially declare that. That didn't look anything like that. I mean, you could kind of tell if you knew it was supposed to be a citadel, but it was kind of melty on the sides. And man, if you remember that Corfu flight and the Canaries, they really did a great job with all these rocky shorelines. These weren't the best I've seen. And there's another little fort right here called Mosellio. And I couldn't get the history of that place because when I clicked on it, it was just taking me to some touristy stuff in this town. And that might be another portion of it there. You can kind of see it looks like some of those Amsterdam forts. They might have had a moat going around here at one time. And it looks like they built something on the top of that part of it there. And there's that airport, St. Catherine. And then we cruise down here to our approach for the big city. And let's take a look at this real quick where those fort ruins were. So there's the lighthouse. And it looks like they got two lighthouses there. And I do remember seeing something down here. So maybe they did model both of them. That's definitely a lighthouse. You can tell. And so is that. So maybe one of them is just a museum. But look at that. I couldn't get any information about that. There was no bookmark on that in Google at all. So I don't know what was going on with that fort. And then there's that other little tower again. Towers, towers, towers. And here's their citadel here. Look at this thing. Not as big as that last one, but it looks good. I'm going to go fly over that one of the choppers. And here's Napoleon's home, which is a museum now. 
That's where he was born. And they had another little place up in the mountains somewhere. I couldn't find out where that one was, but that's where his family lived and you can go tour it. And here's where the helicopter landing pad is, which I will try landing at that, although it's not marked in the sim, but that is the military base out here, the Navy base. And that's probably a horse track. And we came in for our approach. So that's it, guys. We've seen the island of Corsica. Cool flight, popping aside. I liked it. Hope you'll check it out. And if you do, set it for sunset. Oh, before we go, let me turn the lights off in here. Let me show you this plane with the UV lights because that looked pretty cool. All right, let's, let me turn the lights on first. I'll turn all of them on. We'll get the red lights going too. All right, check this out. You can already kind of see it there. Look at that. How cool is that? I can't think of any other planes. A lot of them will have the red lights, but I've never seen one with the UV lights like that. Very cool. And man, this airport looks cool too. I may take a helicopter night flight out here. That's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, guys. Well, I don't want to belabor it because I got a chopper to fly. Had an absolute blast as always. Can't wait to see you all again in the skies. I'll end you with our map of Corsica here. Later.